David did with um, Buzzy. Welcome to Van Wyke Presbyterian Church. How good is it to be at God's house this morning? <laughs> it is a joy to see each of you this morning and also to greet those who are worshiping with us online today. I do hope that each one of us gathered today on this Lord's Day would indeed find a sense of God's peace and presence among us. I am Reverend Carson Overstreet, and it truly is a joy and a privilege to serve as pastor with this community of faith. I thank you first and foremost for keeping covenant with each other in this um, curious time of life. So thank you for wearing face masks and for social distancing and also from just giving one another air hugs and hand waves so that we don't give the gift that keeps on giving. Thank you also for bringing me your prayer cards before our worship service starts. Um, I will be sharing these uh, before our community prayer today and we will update our prayer bulletin. You can find the worship bulletin online on our church website at vwpc.org. And please do remember you may place your offerings if you are so generously led um, in the offering basket after worship is over today. I do have a special request for each of us to be mindful of as we do keep covenant. Um, please uh, remember that you do have restroom access through the bond room doors should you need that. Uh, but please do refrain from entering the sanctuary as we gather outdoors for worship. And I thank you for that in advance. Um, as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, let us quiet ourselves for a few moments to tend our souls before our Lord. Lord God, your servants are listening and we pray that this worship service would honor you today above all else. Come Holy Spirit. Amen. Our call to worship today comes from the Glory to God hymnal, from a hymn that many of us know, O Lord, how shall we meet you? 
So let us call ourselves to worship. O Lord, how shall we meet you? How welcome you aright. Your people long to greet you, my hope, my heart's delight. O kindle, O Lord most holy, a lamp within my breast, to do in spirit lowly all that may please you best. Let us worship God. Friends, why do we confess to God and one another each and every week? God's holiness is on the move among us to uproot the condition of sin in which we live in. So in confession, God tills the soil of our faith to prepare us for receiving God's grace, forgiveness, and new life. So let us pray in one voice if you are led. Lord God, honoring you is the beginning of wisdom. Forgive us for turning away from your wisdom and instruction. Forgive us for allowing hardships and indifference to callous our faith with cynicism. Forgive us for allowing worldly cares to choke our godly calling to love our neighbor as ourselves. Apart from Jesus Christ, we can do nothing. Empower us to abide in Jesus' wisdom, faithfulness, and compassion. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So know that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and be at peace. Amen, amen, amen. As we prepare to enter God's word this morning, please pray with me. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your Sabbath. And in a chaotic world, we pray for this opportunity to rest in your grace by the presence of your word. Speak to us the truths that we need to hear, that we might have the Holy Spirit sow within us seeds of hope and new life to face each day of this coming week with courageous faith. Come Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13, verses 18 through 23. And this is our assigned New Testament reading today. And I invite you to listen for God's word to you and also to me this morning. Jesus was explaining the parable of the sower to his disciples. And he said, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another 60, and in another 30. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Jesus, as you know, taught in parables. He taught in parables to meet the people where they are in life. He taught in parables to speak into our lived experiences. And he also taught in parables to point to a spiritual truth, the spiritual truth about God's amazing grace. Those who first heard Jesus' words, they knew the hard truths about sowing seeds. The ideal is to have good soil to harvest a hundredfold, even just thirtyfold. And yet those first century farmers in Jesus' time, they knew all about the risks and the required endurance to plant among those pesky birds, God love them, the rocky grounds, and the thorny fields. They had to be vigilant to outsmart those birds who would do that amazing dive down and steal the seeds. It took a lot of patience to break up and soften beaten down soil. It took a lot of resolve to make broad space among the thorny weeds so that seeds could grow. But for the disciples and anyone who had ears to listen, Jesus was making a spiritual point that we are sowing God's word among hard truths in his time and in our time today. On any given Sunday, any preacher worth her salt will tell you that we sow the seeds of God's word along the, the path of life. And we preachers say and we pray that whatever God has put on our hearts on any given Sunday, that it would take root among the masses, but even in just one heart. That's all we ask God for. God's ultimate hope is always that the gospel of Jesus Christ would completely revolutionize our lives. That in receiving the good word, the good news over and over and over again, that we would no longer live for ourselves, but that we would live for God alone. But as each of us grow up in God's grace, no matter where we are in our stage or season of life, we must be vigilant to hold fast to God's word and to overturn the enemy's attempts to snatch away what has been sown in our hearts. Right, kiddos? Yep. <laughs> On any given day, we people of faith, we are not alone in sowing seeds of hard truth. In fact, I know many of us today find ourselves in rocky situations in thorny places of life. The family member who is caring for a loved one who has been beaten down with mental health struggles knows hard packed ground. The disciple who faces yet another day with a troubling diagnosis is well acquainted with the thorns of life testing her or his faith. Friends, if you are sowing seeds of God's grace along your path and you feel like you are throwing those seeds along rocky ground or among the thorny places of life, if you feel that you are sowing seeds and that your efforts have failed, if you feel that the good soil that you have had for so many years is right now languishing in a dry season of faith, then I want you to know that you are in good company. You are not alone. Jesus' parable it allows us to stand in solidarity with one another. Jesus' parable, in fact, shines a light of hope into our challenges that we face today. 
as a colleague once shared with me many years ago, you and I, we are not called to be successful. You and I, we are called to be faithful. Right, church? We are not called to be successful. We are called to be faithful. Jesus Christ invites you and me to join God in sowing the seeds of God's word, those seeds of faith, hope, and love. Seeds that will indeed take root, and in God's good timing, they will bring about the harvest of God's kingdom for all to see. But I need you to hear me clearly. The coming of God's kingdom is not solely dependent upon our human efforts or our faith alone. You and I, we are not that powerful. And God's purposes and promises, they will never be thwarted. I need to hear amen, y'all. <laughs> it is by the grace of God, the redeeming power of Jesus Christ, and the direction of the Holy Spirit that the sowing of seeds will indeed bear God's glorious fruit, and we will experience seasons of God's success. We will experience times of human struggle and despair and even failure. We will experience moments of God's Spirit saying, my ways are not your ways, and my timing, it is not your timing. The ways that God's grace is at work in the wider world and in our lives, it is truly a mystery. So I want you to be encouraged today. As you sow seeds along your way, I need you to remember that you may never know who God will place behind you to soften the hard places of another's beaten down soul. As we sow seeds together as a community of faith and move on to the next field, we may never know whose heart the Spirit might work through to restore a resolve to persevere. It takes a lot of endurance and patience and resolve for God's spiritual nurturing and soul tending to happen. Collectively, it all makes good soil for the seeds that we sow to take root and to flourish. God is the sovereign gardener and we are just the sower of God's seeds, God's word, God's faith, hope, and love. So I want you, gosh, I wish I had gotten, gone to the dollar store and bought a bunch of seeds for y'all but I was trying to keep my social distance. But I want you to throw those seeds of God's grace with reckless abandon when you leave this church today and as you go on into your daily rhythm this week. Throw around those seeds of God's grace with reckless abandon because you and I are called to be what, church? Faithful. You and, say it with me. You and I are called to be faithful. faithful. We're not called to be successful. The Apostle Paul says this in Ephesians 3, 21. It may be a familiar verse to you as you hear me say it often. Now to God who by the power at work within you and me is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ever ask or imagine. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I'm grateful for your prayer request that you've given me to this day, and I will be adding these to our prayer list that we share together, and I'll also be adding these to my prayer list. So, 
Let us be in prayer for, for these beloved ones. Please be in prayer for Donna Sigmund as she faces another surgery on July the 20th. And we're grateful for the good recovery that she's had from the past surgery. Please be in prayer for Charlie Harrell, son of Diane and Andy Harrell, with health concerns. Please be in prayer for John Carnes, with health concerns. Please be in prayer for Mark Gilstrap, also health concerns. Please continue to be in prayer for Chip Oglesby. And please also be in prayer for Rusty Roddy, also health concerns. Remembering these, let us go to God in prayer. God of grace, you are the giver of life. You are our redeemer and our spiritual compass along this journey of faith. And we thank you for your abiding presence and we pray that you will strengthen our hearts and minds to do nothing less than abide in you. Lord God, we pray for those among us and those we know who feel the seeds of faith that have been planted are at risk of being snatched away. Lord, rekindle the joy of your salvation in them and let that joy for you be their strength. Lord God, we pray for those who feel they are standing on rocky ground today. Lord, there are some hearts that have been hardened by hardship, leaving them with stones of cynicism. Some are experiencing a spiritual drought, Lord, and are pained deeply. Redeemer God, remove the stones and give your life-giving water to be that balm of Gilead. Lord God, we pray for those who are being tested by the thorny places of life. Spirit of the living God, embrace these ones in your divine protection and give them a broad place to persevere, heal, grow, and thrive in the promises of faith, hope, and love. Spirit of gentleness, we lift up our prayer request that we are sharing today. We pray for Donna Sigmund. We pray for Charlie Harrell. We pray for John Carnes. We pray for Mark Gilstrap. We pray for Chip Oglesby. We pray for Rusty Roddy. And Lord, we lift up the silent prayers that only you know. Lord God, we entrust all of our prayers to your faithfulness those that are spoken and unspoken. And we give them to you saying the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we remember the stewardship of the church and the ongoing ministries for Van White Presbyterian, we know that the Lord gives what is good and makes a pathway for generosity to follow. So let us walk and the righteousness of Christ as we bring our gifts to God through our tithes and our pledges and our offerings. And you'll be invited to come at the close of the worship service and bring your gifts forward. But let me 
let me offer this uh, prayer of dedication over them. So let us pray. Lord God, thank you for filling us with every spiritual grace that we might be a blessing for others and be blessed by you. We pray that you would consecrate the gifts that we offer for the increase of your love. May they bring blessing to others and praise to your glorious name. Amen. now go with a bold assurance that through this gift of faith, our mighty God is certainly able to do far more than we can ever hope, ask for, or imagine. And may the love of an amazing God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the deep embrace of Holy Spirit be with you this day and every single moment of your life as you throw those seeds of grace everywhere you go. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.